hat is a hat because of science. Conformer terrier conformer was invented in the 1770s, actually. It's great big and it went on your head. And the thing is, hat makers didn't invent it. Phrenologists did. Back then, they believed that the shape of your head determined your sanity. Hey! Hey! My father-in-law and I started this, and we spent months looking for the right place. I tried to look at that place. And you said, no, I could not find no a place parking. to park. They always find a place to park if they want to come to it. Well, so you got to make it where they want to come to it. If you build it, they will come. If you build it, they will come. I was wrong, and they came. It's kind of amazed me how things transpired when we first started. And Jeff puts a lot of his heart into his work, you know. I've been doing hats since 96. I just fell in love with the whole art of it and the science of it. You know, if you've never seen a hat before and I told you what I was doing, you would think it's impossible. It's uh, fur all the way through. There's no plastic or anything in, in the middle of it. Uh, and then stiffened by shellac, which comes from the abdomen of, of beetles. And so a hat is essentially hair and bug guts. The thing about Decatur and, and Wise County really is, you know, there's still a lot of working cowboys. They're the guys that really make you back up what you're saying. He's going to wear that hat, whether it's in style or not, and he's going to wear it every day. Bringing in the herd. Bringing in the herd, getting them cleaned up, and getting reshaped. If a guy hands you a hat to let you work on it, right then it's an honor to be able to do that because he really loves that hat, especially if it's an old hat. How much money do you reckon you want in this? Oh, the cactus there brought me some pretty good luck. It's probably the hat, though. Yeah. It probably has nothing to do with you. It's just, it's just, just the hat. hat. It's the hat. And if they trust you to make a hat, it is an incredible honor to be able to do that. Same old shape. Yes, Big sir. Big crease. That's it. The different shapes of hats were kind of regional or by what you did. The guy working cows had a different shape than the guy busting Bronx. Just shape it more Western. Cowboy it up? Yeah. And nowadays, it's, it's really up to preference, you know, how you want it. And then maybe a little bigger. There's guys skinny as a rail to get five inch brims, you know, stick them straight up. And there's bigger guys wearing smaller hats. It's just all about preference. I like it that way. I mean, he can make anything. If it goes on your head, he can make it. A hat to me is an extension of your personality. It's who you are. We literally brought 50 different style of hats into him, and he's made them exactly what we wanted. I haven't said no yet. And I'll tell you, it'll beat the pants off of anybody that is going to be wearing just your straight Stetson bought on Amazon Prime. There's a lot of guys out there that make the art first. Um, I make the hat first. It has to be a solid hat, and then you can put whatever you want to on it. A lot of times we're the end result for customers because they've been to the Western stores, and they just can't get off the rack what they need. I only make hats I design. I've made production hats and I've made custom hats. And I can take the best of both worlds and put them together. And that's one thing that really makes us different is, is being able to do that and being able to apply it. it makes a big difference for the life of the hat. We met Jeff through a friend who said there's a new hatter coming into town. He does it just like they did turn of the century. So I couldn't wait to come in and check him out because I'm all about artists and handmade things. And there's been a renaissance here in Decatur. These are the counties that time forgot. And because of that, you know, the demographic out here and the people that are out here just scream art, even though they're not artists. My goal is to make that hat so well and fit so good that it, it turns them into a hat customer. And, and we do it on a daily basis. You know, people who never worn hats before all of a sudden won't leave the house without one. What actually drew me was I heard he made a hat from the movie There Will Be Blood. And I thought, in, in a tiny town in Decatur, how is this guy making the hats for one of the best movies ever made? Look at this beautiful piece of art. They have it in their mind that this is what a hat should be, and they can't find that anywhere. And we give it to them, and, it, and they don't say anything, but you can see it in their face. It just it lights up. I don't know the exact percentage, uh, but it's really high of people coming back to get a second hat. But now it's three hats, four hats. I got a couple of people that have seven hats. Matter of fact, being in here, I'm getting a little bit of hat fever. Yeah, I walked in with hat fever. What I really get the satisfaction from is when you come back to buy a hat, because seeing all this, it's easy to fall in love with, the whole idea of everything, but proving the quality, that's where it stands with me. 
So I think maybe we can stay in business another year or two. Yeah, we'll be around another week or two. <laughs> maybe you, by that time you can show me how to shake. Well, I'm coming back to Fort Worth, shiner in my blood, and I was riding through the midnight hour in the Jacksboro flood. And I won't stop for gambling, hell, I lost too many farms, and my woman done fell for me in a richer man's own, my God. Someone stole my candles and burned them at both ends. I can't afford to pay attention. Drank away my drinking friends. And I'm hunting down the coyote that has outside this dive. And I shot at the moon last night with my last 45.